So here's a game that I'm working on. Uh, the idea is to shoot the right color uh, sphere. Uh, you, If you make the mistake and shoot the wrong one, then you get some strikes. If you get three strikes, then you are out. So up oh, there, we're doing okay so far. Still okay, still okay. Uh, game over. Um, if we try this again, no. Oh, that one is right, that one's not right. So there's nothing in the game here that tells us what the uh, uh, what the right value is or what color I should be shooting. So let's try this again and take a look at what else is, uh, is going on. On my desk, I've got this, uh, this little microcontroller that's connected to an LED. Currently the LED is green, so if I hit the green, it hits, then changes to red. Try it again, hits, changes to blue, changes back to green. So every time I hit a, uh, a sphere successfully, it will change colors. If I don't hit the, uh, s the correct sphere, it doesn't change color. So let's take a look at how I designed this. The microcontroller that I have here is connected to a, an RGB LED and the Microcontroller is an argon from the company Particle. Particle creates Arduino-style microcontrollers that have cloud capabilities. So in this particular case, what we can do is access the uh, functions or variables that are exposed to the cloud to perform some interesting things. And this is how we're going to develop the connectivity between UE4 and the microcontroller using the VA plug REST plugin. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about programming the microcontroller. It's programmed in C. And the two important parts are in the right-hand corner here, these particle functions. The variable is going to expose the variable LED, uh, which will allow us to tell which color the LED is uh, at a, any given time. And then change LED will either generate a random color or allow us to control which color is actually being lit. To demonstrate my implementation of the VARS plugin, I tried to use the default first person map without any uh, without many changes. Uh, the changes that I did make are here and are pretty straightforward. I'll highlight some of them in the uh, uh, a little bit later on in the video. Essentially we've got a uh, uh, an actor called the sphere and the sphere is going to handle collision logic. Uh, and then I have a material that allows me to change the colors and the uh, uh, importantly the ID. So the ID of each individual sphere is going to be related to its color and that's going to allow us to uh, see whether or not the correct sphere is being hit. Then several material instances for the red, green, and blue spheres. Debug UI isn't looked at here. That was just for, uh, for obviously, debugging purposes. The LED game UI is uh, uh, just has a simple game over display once the game is actually over. And then the game mode contains the logic for, uh, uh, for setting up the timers, the scoring, and uh, importantly, the VA rest stuff. So that's where we should take a look next. Let's spend a few minutes going through the JSON request that we need to formulate uh, using the VA REST plugin functions. It, uh, it all starts with this VA REST subsystem, which needs to be uh, included. You know, right clicking and adding VA REST subsystem will pull this up. And that's going to be tied into a uh, construct JSON request. This is also in the, uh, in the VA REST subsystem. In my case, I needed a, a post request, and it is important to set the content type to request body because my application is expecting the uh, parameters to be in the body of the, uh, the request. 
My access token is, uh, is kept in a macro just so I don't have to uh, um, hide it here and show it off to the world. But to make a, a, a JSON, this is another function that is, uh, uh, is in the uh, VA REST plugin, uh, allows you to very easily set up the arguments um, in my particular application. I just need a, uh, an access token and the variable uh, or the parameter is called args. And if I don't add anything, uh, if it's null, then, uh, uh, then a random color will be assigned to the, to the LED. Otherwise, I would be able to put in red, green, or blue, or black here for different, uh, uh, different fixed outputs. Notice here now the return value from the JSON request needs to go into several uh, daisy chained requests here. We need to, these four different items in order to uh, establish a, a, a post properly. We do need to set the request object. We do need to bind an event on request complete. I guess we don't have to, but uh, presumably that you would want to actually do something with the information that you get. Likewise, you probably could ignore if things fail, but I do have a, uh, uh, um, an event bound to the request fail, and it just prints a string during the development. And then lastly is, the, uh, uh, is actually processing the URL. Again, um, I've just kept all the URL information in a macro just to keep this nice and, uh, uh, nice and tidy, but this is your standard uh, uh, API reference that you would be uh, sending. If we take a look now at a complete post and take a look at what I'm doing here, the very first thing uh, is I'm getting the response as a string. And this isn't necessary for the operation of my, uh, my application, but in debugging, I like to see the entire JSON string. So I put that into a variable and I do have a, uh, a debug UI widget that, uh, that will display this whenever it gets uh, gets updated. We don't see that in the uh, uh, in the video, however. Then there's uh, the important stuff, which is getting the actual response object. You do need to know what the nature of the object is. In my case, I know that the value that I'm interested in, uh, which is an integer telling me which uh, LED is displayed, uh, is stored in the value return value. And since it's a number, I'm getting a number field. And then I set that to a variable that I'm going to use later on. There are two other functions or events in the, uh, uh, in the game mode, and I'm not going to go over these in too much detail because there's nothing really exciting here. When we begin play, I do create a widget and add that to the viewport so that it will display game over once the game is over. Importantly here, I do update the LED to get a new starting position. And then I set a timer to uh, decrease uh, uh, the amount of time uh, left to actually uh, um, shoot the different uh, uh, the different spheres, and then I monitor on the tick whether or not the game is actually over. And the game is going to be over if the strikes is greater than two. So in other words, if you've hit the if you've made three mistakes in the uh, in the shooting, or if the uh, timer goes down to uh, to zero. The sphere blueprint has all of the logic for addressing or handling when a collision with the particle or projectile is uh, uh, occurs. And when the component is hit, the first thing that we're going to do is grab the game mode because we need a couple of variables. And uh, those variables are the, uh, uh, the LED value and the ID of the uh, uh, the component that is actually hit. These two have been set. Uh, if they're equal to one another, then that means that this was a, uh, a good hit. You, we, we hit the correct, uh, the correct sphere, and we go off and assign an updated score, and then uh, change the LED color. If it is uh, false, if you ended up hitting the wrong uh, sphere, it increments the strikes. Notice also that I'm uh, grabbing the actors, all of the actors, and making sure that the uh, that this event only triggers when it's the first person projectile that is hitting. So if you are running around and you hit one of the spheres, it does not trigger anything. 
So there's my implementation of using a REST API using the VA REST plugin uh, and Unreal Engine to make a, a game that is actually uh, going out and exploring or getting information from the outside uh, outside world. In this case here, we're uh, sort of taking this physical computing idea to the uh, uh, to the next level and creating a uh, sort of hybrid virtual reality reality type game.